We'll tell you everything you need to know to fly a drone in the town of Barnstable on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, June 30th, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. Drones are gaining popularity, gaining accessibility, gaining technology. Uh, here with me today to talk a little bit about the important regulations and things you want to keep in mind. I welcome Airport Assistant Manager Katie Service and Airport Manager Bud Briel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much uh, for, for welcoming me here over the airport today. Um, so drones, uh, really something that used to be non-existent and then was very expensive, cost prohibitive, and now you can you know pretty much go into any electronic store and get one, but there's a lot of things that people need to keep in mind when operating drones. So let's talk about um, some of the drone regulations, especially as it pertains uh, to uh, you guys here at the airport. So I guess I'll start. I, um, the first thing that you need to know is there's three different types of drone operators, and we commonly call them drones. They're actually unmanned aircraft systems, UASs. It's easier to say drone. So drones, there's three different types. There's your uh, hobbyist or your model aircraft drone operators. There's your commercial operators, which would include your real estate agents, anybody basically that is being paid to operate a drone to take photographs or video. And then your public entity, which is a government entity, such as the Barnstable Police Department or Hyannis Fire, that may have a drone for their use, for their, pers for their business, for, um, for the public entity. So each of those types of users must register their drone with the Federal Aviation Administration. So none of those users are exempt from that. They all must register their aircraft, their unmanned aircraft. Is there a different procedure for each kind of operator or is it pretty much the same procedure uh, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional? There's different requirements for each one. So um, we'll start with um, the hobbyist. The hobbyist, they're required to register their aircraft with the FAA. They get a registration number and they have to show that registration as proof that they've completed that uh, task, that they go went ahead and got that through the FAA. Then you have your commercial operator, and your commercial operator is the most stringent in terms of what they're supposed to have. A commercial operator is the operator itself is supposed to have a, at least a private pilot's license. So the operator has to be a private pilot in order to operate that vehicle. Um, they have to get a letter of agreement from the Federal Aviation Administration to operate that vehicle. Um, they have to have a certificate of authorization from the FAA, um, and then they also have to register their unit, the, the um, uh, aircraft. So that's much more stringent. Um, from the public entity, so like the police department or Hyannis Fire, they need a certificate of authorization from the FAA, and they prefer that they have their pilot's license, but if not, they can um, get an approved training program that's approved by the FAA, uh, that indicates that they know how to operate that vehicle. So that's a little bit for the pu different for the public. Sure. Now, are we talking about in, like an actual pilot's license where you could fly yes. a regular plane? Wow. Yes. An actual pilot's license is the requirement for a commercial operator. These drones are considered to be aircraft for the purposes of FAA regulations, and they're flying in federal airspace. Everything from the ground up is federal airspace. Uh, so whether you believe it or not, but it is. And then, of course, you have uh, private private concerns as well. Sure. So, you know, one of our goals is, is to, with all of these concerns, is we don't want to have to get into an enforcement situation because it's very difficult. But we're, our goal is to educate the public uh, so that they can act responsibly, have fun, but follow the rules. So what we're trying to do is prevent mid-air collisions. We're trying to prevent uh, uh, near misses with our aircraft and preserve people's right to privacy. Uh, so all at the same time. So it's a difficult thing to do. So I would imagine that uh, here at the airport uh, there are very strict regulations as to uh, where uh, and where people can or cannot uh, fly their, their unmanned aircraft. At the airport we're considering, we consider this a no drone zone. In I fact, like we've, that. we've been talking about putting signs up on all of our fences with a note, with a drone, with a you know the red circle with a, a slash through it. Sure. To make sure that people know that. And of course, if you're within five miles of an airport that has a tower, 
uh, you're supposed to be calling operations or the tower, and in our case, the tower, to be able to get permission to fly your aircraft five miles. Uh, if you're three miles from a, a airport that has no uh, tower, you'd be t talking to the airport manager. So in our case, if, you, if you're going to be five miles around Hyannis, then you should call the tower. At our number is 508-771-0286. Again, 508-771-0286 and talk to the tower manager uh, and about what you want to do. And he'll ask you a series of questions. And you, you should be able to have all the requirements that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things is about registration and whether you're, you know, what type of an operation you're doing, where you're going to do it, how high you're going to be. You shouldn't be going more than 400 feet at, at height. There's no night flying. Um, you should be within line of sight of the operator. In other words, you don't want to run this thing all over the place using your camera to navigate because that's illegal. And uh, stay away from aircraft, and stay and stay under 55 pounds, and um, just stay, and stay out of private people's property. You know, don't don't invade someone else's property. I think the biggest thing that we're concerned about is getting near aircraft. Mm. Uh, and there there are things that you can do to check, make sure. There is an app that you can load onto your smartphone. It's B, the letter B, letter the number four, the letter U, fly, F L Y, before you fly. If you use that app, it'll tell you if whether you're near an airport or not, and that you should be calling to get a clearance to fly your your uh, drone. I would imagine that um, that the drones, if they were to fly in and around the air, airport or the flight path, uh, could be quite dangerous uh, to a to a pilot. I'm thinking of similar to perhaps a bird strike. Right, exactly, and and that's a good point that you bring up about a bird strike because some of these. <clears throat> Drones, um, obviously, if it's a, a model air, um, or hobbyist flying, it has to be under 55 pounds. But we have drones that um, we've seen that are a couple of ounces, and they could cause some damage to an aircraft. So that's our main concern: is you know the size of these um, of these UASs, these drones, could cause some serious damage. They can get ingested to an aircraft engine. They could actually hit the windshield of an aircraft and cause some serious damage. So that's our biggest concern: is to keep these drones away from the flying public here at the airport. Absolutely. There, there was one uh, reported uh, mid-air collision with a drone. It was in England over uh, Heathrow Airport where a drone hit a commercial aircraft. Fortunately, the, the commercial aircraft was not damaged enough to cause any you know, permanent damage, but they, and they were able to safely land. But it could have just as easily have gone into an engine of a single-engine aircraft, could have just as easily gone through the cockpit. We've had birds here that weigh a lot less than some of these drones weigh, cause severe damage, and could actually cause a, uh, a crash uh, with loss of life. So that's what we're trying to prevent. You know, people think that you can just go to the store and buy them and go out and, and fly them, and most of them, most people are doing that, and they're all illegal. And registration is 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 a very severe uh, penalties. Uh, mm -hmm. Civil penalties up to twenty-seven thousand five hundred. Wow. Criminal penalties up to two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and/or imprisonment for violation of not registering your drone. So, and then there's other issues with other you know types of things. If if it's a reckless endangerment and that type of thing, we try to get the local police to enforce some of this stuff. Wow. And I mean, I think the the main concern for us is that we do have some. Um, operators that are operating as commercial operators. Mm. They're um, accepting funds for what they're doing for the videos or the photographs that they're taking, but they're stri strictly model or hobbyist aircraft, so you can't mix the two. So our main concern is, one, make sure you're operating the right type of vehicle for the uh, license that you have. And two is, the other thing is, you know, these are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to buy. So if mom and dad are gonna buy their son or daughter a drone, um, the age limit is 13, but the parents need to know, or the legal guardians need to know that, yes, this is next to an airport, and what is your child doing with the drone? Where are they flying it? So if they're the legal guardian, they're signing for that person, um, they could be liable to these civil pen penalties and criminal penalties. Sure. Yeah, so in, you're not supposed to, you know, I don't, didn't know if you caught it or not, but you, if you're a hobbyist, you cannot be using your camera and then selling the products exactly. because that's illegal.